Good morning, and thank you for joining us today at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Pastor Rachel continues on with maternity leave. Joining us again this Sunday will be Pastor John Gentry. We welcome him and we welcome you to our worship service today. Call to worship. Will you please join me in the call to worship? God's strong voice calls us to worship, calling us to sing and offer praise. God's creative voice call us to worship, calling us to life and light. God's loving voice calls us to worship, calling us to love and loved. Amen. Unison Prayer Word of God, speak to us, for your servants are listening. Spirit of creation and renewal, hover over our gathering this day. And you hovered over creation on that first day. Enter into our hearts and our lives as you did at the day of our baptism. Descend on us like a dove, as you did on Jesus' day of baptism. Speak from the heavens into our ears and souls, that we hear again your words of love and acceptance. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As I mentioned in last week's worship service, I want to offer you an alternative way of passing the peace in the form of a weekly challenge to help us embody the spirit of hospitality and peacemaking. For today's challenge, as we prepare ourselves to respond to the scripture readings of Acts 19 and Matthew 3, I would like to invite you to pay attention to any opportunities that you might have this week uh, for building new relationships and uh, sharing in God's love and grace. 
I realized that during a pandemic, we might have to get creative and think outside the box. But are there any people uh, who you see fairly regularly, like a, a neighbor or maybe a, a committee member from church on Zoom meeting, or perhaps a coworker if you're an essential worker, uh, and any, any of those people that you haven't had a, a good conversation, maybe this is a great time to learn a name or ask a question. I know we aren't all built to be super evangelists like St. Paul, but we do all get chances here and there to be peacemakers. Would you consider doing this with me today or sometime this week? As we hear in Colossians 3.15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body, and be thankful. Amen. Our ministry moments for this Sunday will be our community coffee hour. Bring your favorite mid-morning drink to join us after the service at 1130 online or via your phone and join us for some social and community time with your church members. We also want to remind you that the Mason Jar Ministry drop-off will be Sunday, January 24th from 1 to 2.30 at the church. Don't forget, wear your mask. Scripture lesson. Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. While the Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you become believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Scripture lesson. Our second scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen. Would you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We pray that as we reflect on the scriptures that we have just heard, that the words would become like seeds planted deep into the soil of our hearts and minds and take root so that we will be able to bear the good fruit of your spirit. Amen. Well, good morning. 
I know you must surely miss Pastor Rachel, but I am honored to be joining you for worship today once again. We are in the second installment of a series that I am calling Lift Up Your Eyes as we position ourselves at the start of this new year to see what God is doing among us. Last week we looked at the stories of Isaiah 60 and Matthew 2 to renew a sense of imagination in the way that we view our spiritual pilgrimage through the seasons of Christmas and Epiphany. This week we are diving into the theme of baptism and paying attention to who it is that we meet in those waters of baptism. I've been thinking a lot about water this week, uh, both voluntarily in my sermon preparation and also involuntarily too. On Monday night, my wife and I began hearing squish sounds uh, as we walked down the hallway, which of course is never a good thing, followed soon by water bubbling up in the floorboards. After uh, inspection, uh, it turned out to be a slab leak that is coming from the hot water line. That means that we've been taking cold showers all week, which is a doozy. Whew. Now, I am from South Carolina. While the winters there are no match for much colder places in the Northeast and Midwest, temperatures still do drop below freezing. And I grew up with two brothers and two sisters, so a big family means the hot water running out was a regular part of life, even in the winter. But I didn't get used to it then, and I don't seem to be getting used to it this week either. That's why I am always amazed by people who voluntarily say yes to polar plunges. I grew up at the top of a cul-de-sac on Lake Hartwell, Lake Hartwell, and when I was in high school, my brother and a few friends uh, of his started their own tradition of doing a polar plunge into the icy waters of the lake every January. Why, oh why, did they do it? I, I don't know. To this day, I still don't. They weren't raising money for the Special Olympics or the Make-A-Wish Foundation, like uh, some official polar plunge events. No, I guess they just wanted to feel alive, you know? Um, doing the thing that normal people do when they want to feel alive, taking a 40-degree bath. Now, I think about it, maybe it's not such a strange thing during this pandemic, we have all kinds of things that we wouldn't normally do uh, that we're doing now to keep living life and, and keep that spark of hope alive. We wouldn't normally spend this much time on Zoom and FaceTime calls, but it's worth it to stay connected with the people that we love and to carry on with our, our work and school. Most of us wouldn't normally think of carrying hand sanitizer and a mask in our back pocket at all times, but we do it because we want to keep ourselves and others alive and well. And when it comes to Christian baptism, while we view the sacrament as an ordinary or regular means of God's grace, it is by no means unexceptional or uneventful. On the contrary, we find new life in baptism. It's something that Jesus both commanded and participated in. And as we take the plunge, Many of us in our infancy by sprinkling, uh, and yet in different forms for others, the act is a reminder of our dependence on God for life in the present and eternal life to come. In it, God's saving work begins in us, and we experience, as Titus 3, 5 puts it, the waters of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. It's the day that we remember Jesus' baptism at the hands of John the Baptist just before Jesus began his public ministry. United Methodist and many Western churches often focus their Epiphany celebrations on the story of the Magi, like we talked about last week, but Eastern Orthodox Christians primarily connect Epiphany with Jesus' baptism that reveals Jesus to us as God's Son. There are all kinds of interesting epiphany traditions. You might celebrate one or two, but one of the most unique is the one that's 
uh, or at least un most unique to me, is one practiced by some Orthodox Christians in Russia and Eastern Europe who have a polar plunge of their own. Here, on the eve of Epiphany, priests and parishioners grab their axes and chainsaws and head out to the frozen rivers and lakes to cut holes big enough to dip in. They usually carve them in the shape of a cross and then add wooden steps to assist people in and out of that frigid water. At the ceremony, there is a blessing of the water before some very brave souls in their swimwear wade into the water as at below zero temperatures to dunk three times and then head out. They do it to commemorate Jesus' baptism, and they take it as a holy day of healing and cleansing. There's a certain amount of alertness that comes with being in the cold, right? If anyone is feeling a bit sluggish or sleepy before getting into that water, I guarantee you that they will be wide awake afterward. That is, in a sense, uh, what we are called to do when we celebrate Jesus' baptism uh, on this Sunday. We are called to pay attention, to be alert, and to lift up our eyes to the glory of the heavens opening and the Spirit of God ascending upon Jesus like a dove. You might say to yourself that if you were there, well, you would certainly be paying attention, right? But what about today? as we reread and retell the story, for the umpteenth time for many of us, are we still paying attention? Do we feel the pull to remember our own baptism and to trust that the Holy Spirit is active among us? Are you overwhelmed with the joy that the same Spirit that worked in Jesus to bring the dead to life is the Spirit that lives in us? In the scripture reading from Matthew 3 that we have heard today, we hear that Jesus came to the banks of the Jordan to wade into the waters of that river to be baptized. And at those banks, John the Baptist had been baptizing people and calling them to repentance, to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Like the prophets of old, John pointed not to himself, but to the one that God was sending, who would offer an even greater baptism with the Holy Spirit and fire. You can imagine John's surprise then when Jesus asks to be baptized by him. He tells Jesus, I need to be baptized by you? And do you come to me? Jesus' response is this, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Both the journey of the wise men to Bethlehem and the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan urge us to pay attention. Because God is fulfilling his promises, Jesus has become one of us and has modeled for us what it means to listen and obey. And surely will be exalted at the right hand of God as he has been. This has been a difficult week for our nation. The events surrounding the capital have, have left people feeling stunned and in disbelief. Rather than a peaceful transition of power, things have seemed to be everything but peaceful. On top of that, we continue to hear about cases of COVID-19 going up and up. I know this is not how we wanted to start 2021, but there is hope. As people of faith, we know that we can trust God in the process. There's a story at the beginning of Acts 19 about a group of disciples the Apostle Paul meets in Ephesus. Apparently, they had been baptized with John's baptism, but had not learned that an even greater baptism of which John had promised was already available. Can you imagine the joy that they must have experienced when they learned from Paul that they could be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Who knows what good things... God has in store for us. My prayer is that God would help us not to despair, but to remember who it is that we have come to love and trust, who has met us in those waters of baptism. Jesus has been faithful and has given us the Holy Spirit. There is a uh, great psalm by Carrie Underwood called Something in the Water. 
part of the lyrics go like this, open my eyes and told me the truth. He said, just a little faith and it'll be get better. So I followed that preacher man down to the river and now I'm changed and now I'm stronger. There must have been something in the water. There must have been something in the water. Oh, there must have been something in the water. Something in the water indeed. On this baptism of the Lord Sunday, lift up your eyes and know that we can trust Jesus to cleanse us, to make us whole, and to, to empower us for life in the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let us prepare for our offering with hearts wide open and ears ready to hear we bring our very lives to this time of offering may we bring more than just our monetary gifts but hearts and minds ready to hear god's call and respond to where god's voice leads us on the next slide you will see ways that you may give. Those three ways are through text, online, and by mail. We thank you for all who continue to give faithfully. Prayer of Confession When our hearts are hard as stone, soften us with your grace. When our lives are riddled with sin and pain, heal us with your mercy. 
When our ears are ringing with self-doubt and cynicism, strengthen us with the words of faith and love. When our minds are muddled with confusion and fear, enlighten us with the radiance of your wisdom. Speak to our spirits from the truth of your being, the reality of your love, and the promise of your forgiveness. Amen. Let us now quiet our hearts and turn our gaze toward God as we go to him in prayer. Lord God, you revealed your son in the waters of the Jordan and anointed him with the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim good news to all people. Sanctify us by that same spirit that we may proclaim the healing power of the gospel by acts of love in your name. We pray that you would teach us to pay attention, to listen and obey, to respond with an open heart and ready legs. We confess that from time to time we have allowed our spiritual life to grow stale, uninspired, rigid. There have been times when we have come to your holy scriptures with eyes glazed over. Yet, we know that in our hearts, we long for your spirit to stir up the waters of our soul and make us fully alive to you and to each other. Help us to remember the power and the transformation of the baptism that you offer. Wake us up and give us fresh eyes. We intercede for our friends and loved ones who are struggling with illness. We lift up to you those among us and those in our communities whose finances and businesses are scraping by. We trust that your spirit is with them. We come to you now in a brief moment of silent prayer to bring to you all the things that fill us up with joy and the things that weigh upon us now. And now we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, which is the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
One of the beautiful things about Christian baptism is that we are all baptized into the same baptism. We hear in Ephesians 4 that there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. For each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. That means that we all have an important role to play in the church. We've got to learn to lean on each other, be graceful with each other, and give each other the boost that is needed. I feel lucky because I've already gotten a boost from you. Uh, someone who was paying close attention to my sermon last week helpfully pointed out uh, to me that I had accidentally referred to Father Greg Boyle as a Jewish priest rather than a Jesuit priest. He is, of course, a Roman Catholic priest of the Jesuit order. So in case you were confused by my slip up uh, of the tongue, I, I figured it could be a good thing to clear that up. To me, that small, helpful correction goes to show that we are much better together, aren't we? And uh, while we're in that stream of thought, I welcome any questions or comments or anecdotes that you might have in response to my sermons. I love hearing feedback as well as stories uh, that come to mind during worship. My email address is pastorjohn at pumchurch.com, uh, so feel free to email me anytime. So at this time, I now leave you with these final words. May the Spirit of God uplift you today and give you the power to love as God loves. Remember that God has not left us alone. Instead, Jesus has baptized us with the Spirit and given us the Advocate to be with us forever. Wherever we go, there God goes with us. Let us pray for lifted eyes to eagerly await for the next thing that God is doing in your life and in this church. Amen? Amen.